Uh, thank you so much for meeting with me today. Pleasure. Can you please introduce yourself and tell me a bit about yourself? Um, my name is Justin Quinn. Um, I'm a freelance musician, composer, first and foremost a guitar player, um, working a lot in the West End, um, uh, in, sort of in theatre, but lots of other sort of freelance recording work and, and other kinds of gigs, currently playing uh, mandolin on Come From Away. Um, yeah. Um, I was born in New York, but I grew up mostly in, in uh, the UK, so. And how did you become involved with Come From Away? Um, well, I'd been, I've been working sort of in, in other theatrical productions for the past, well, I don't know, d 10 years, pretty much fairly solidly in, in London. And, um, I just finished two years on Dreamgirls, which was, um, and it, that show was coming to a close, so I was kind of looking at other productions that were happening, and it just so happened that um, Alan Berry, who's the musical director on this show, he he and I worked together on previous productions. So it was more or less a case of, um, I heard that he was involved already, and I just sort of expressed an interest. And on this show, um, unlike a lot of other musicals there was a sort of an auditioning process um, whereby they took um, potential candidates and um, uh, asked them to play excerpts from the show and things like that so but that was the kind of route through yeah so that's how I came to be involved in, in Come From Away and what's your schedule like? schedule? well the last I mean, we're just coming towards the end of quite an intense rehearsal period with lots of technical rehearsals and um, as well as the shows now that we're in previews. But um, ordinarily for a musician, you're once the show is up and running, there aren't any rehearsals anymore. And so you're you're just in for the uh, for the matinees and evening shows, eight shows a week. Um, and this show, um, as you know, it's a... It's, it has no interval, so it's, it's a hundred minutes long, um, straight through, which is a, so in, that's the only difference from other shows that I've worked on, is that, that the, um, this a lot shorter, the performance, is sort of very intense, but, um, uh, more condensed kind of period of time. And what it's like to be on stage? Yeah, well that's something that is very different from being in an orchestra pit. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's a nice way to end the show and it's, um, I've certainly been involved in lots of productions in the past where you don't get to connect with the audience. You're, you're playing, they're hearing you, you can hear the applause, but you don't feel as though there's, you get that energy. Whereas to, to, to come out at the very end of the, of the show and, and sort of, actually experience the energy from the audience is really nice, so that's good. Um, yeah. And what do you like the most about your job, like being a professional musician? Um, I couldn't possibly imagine doing anything else other than music. You know, I've, it's, um, it's effectively, you know, what I spend most of my day thinking about wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, it's, it's uh, music. So, it, so it, in many ways, I mean, I, some people think, you know, it's it's like your job is your hobby. Um, you, you sort of get the fun of um, of spending your days doing what you what you love doing, and that, I mean, essentially, that's it. You know, I love um, making music, so I. I Although the the hours can feel a bit grueling sometimes, it's you know I wouldn't um, you know it's, it's what I love doing. So so I, so that um, just making music and and one of the great things about theatre to some extent is that um, you very often get to play because I because I love different all sorts of different styles of music. 
And one of the nice things, for example, on this production is getting to play sort of some Celtic music, a bit of bluegrass-inspired music, working with um, some, some of the Irish musicians that are in this production. Um, and um, that's that makes... Those are the sorts of things that somebody that... that that make the kind of freelance work and working in theatre really fun because you get to play all sorts of different kinds of stuff that you might not otherwise do. Yeah. And do you need an agent? No, no agents um, for this kind of work. There, there are what they call um, orchestral contractors, or in, in the UK they call them fixers, um, who effectively they're sort of the the go between between the producer and the musician and they they will usually approach musicians when when a job becomes available but then unlike an agent they're not working they're not um you don't have a so an agent would go out and try and get you work a fixer literally just is asked to put a band together and they call up the people that they think will be best for the job. So, um, and and frequently that work could come through. It could come through other recommendations if you don't have an existing relationship with them, or um, in some instances, the musical director will say, "Oh, I'd like these people," and they'll just tell the the orchestral contractor, the fixer, to to call them. So, so in a, in a sense, it's a it's a sort of a combination between, um, in theory, having a positive, a good relationship with the fixers as well as with musical directors and, and that sort of thing. In terms of how the work comes about. And what kind of experience is usually required? Do you need like a university education for that, or? Uh... Um, I think most. Um, I mean, I say it's probably the majority of you know the musicians, you know, working in in certainly in the, in the West End, will have studied music at a conservatoire or a music college or whatever. But it's not, it's in no way um, required. What is required is the sort of level of musicianship, and um, and I mean, you've it isn't that uncommon that, that younger players perhaps who are just straight out of college are wanting to get into this kind of work um, and certainly I mean it, every instrument's different in terms of what um, skills are kind of less common to, to in terms of the um, the things that you would learn at school or learn at college or for, for example you know there might be lots of people who play guitar in a band, but they will have never followed a conductor. Um, so they, so for rhythm section players, guitar, bass, drums, simply sort of, if you if you're not used to that environment, that can be the kind of the biggest stumbling block. If if musicians come into this who haven't been used to that, because obviously in theatre there's a lot of um, conducted and directed things, which a classical musician would, it, from, you know, would in, in in theory have had tons of experience um, doing, because that's part of their sort of training in, to some extent. So, so, um, so very often, you know, there's a handful of of, uh, of musicians on each instrument in you know in all the you know cities with a sort of a theatre scene the, those that have that experience and tend to keep getting called over and over again for jobs because they're they've got all those the different components that, that make them more employable effectively. And what do you think is the most common misconception about being a professional musician? Um, is it what you expected? I'm not sure I don't know what I don't really know what the I don't know I don't know what people's people imagine it to be. I mean um I think 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I I suppose being on the inside, it's hard to know what people's like uh, misconceptions are. I mean, my my father's a guitar player, um, so I knew very well what I was getting into um, when I started. So I didn't have any uh, misconceptions. I don't think. I mean, I perhaps. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think I think maybe the only you know thing that springs to mind is is perhaps a, a degree of impatience from from younger players in terms of how long it takes to a sort of hone your skills and things like that, but also to establish a good reputation and. And often people were trying to find a shortcut for that, which really, I mean, the internet's slightly changing that because social media, you can kind of advertise to the world what you can do. But by and large, most jobs come about through recommendation, for like a first-hand recommendation of someone that's heard you play or play it with you. And you can only you know, that just takes lots of kind of years of working with people and consistently, in theory, doing a good job, that that eventually gives you sort of a job security that you've got, you know, good reviews from your peers. Um, I think, you know, some. I think sometimes, certainly in this scene, there's less of a sense of sort of like I mean obviously there's always luck involved in 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 jobs but but there's an element of kind of just having to um, persevere and kind of and and just you know the, the thing I you know I always just tell students and things like that is is just focus on kind of doing your absolute best on you know on every single situation you know so that you know, you're consistently, whether it's a tiny gig or a, or the Albert Hall or whatever, you should be trying to give, you know, uh, your A game always, you know, so, and then, and then you're always, you know, you're kind of used to, to, to sort of playing at that level, you, you know, um, but yeah, in terms of misconceptions, I don't, I don't really know. And how frequently do you have to travel for job? Um... For me, not that often. I mean, some some musicians are, are flying all over the place uh, doing freelance work. I mean, that's in a way one of the things I like about the theatre work is that it's um, you know when you're on a on a production that runs for a while, it's a very predictable, regular schedule, and you can enjoy the benefits of that routine. Um, I mean, obviously, this show we were we had a run at the Abbey Theatre in Dublin um, which was a lot of fun and that was a but that had been the first time that I'd been um, away f from London for for any length of time for about it's probably 12 years or something like that I mean when I first I did some touring productions when I first finished college but that's it. and what advice would you give to someone who is interested in this kind of career um yeah, I mean, I think um, specifically theatre, or or do you mean just being a professional musician? Would if you can both, or yeah. whatever you prefer. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's. I mean, I think it's interesting in terms of location. Obviously, you know, we're here in London. Um, in terms of, for example, musical theatre, there are certain big cities, you know, like Toronto and. And New York and London, and where there's quite a lot going on, and obviously that means there's potentially more job opportunities and, and things like that. Um, it's not uncommon for musicians working in theatre to be approached by players who are interested in in getting into that kind of work, asking if they can sit in, and you, and frequently, um, depending on the production, that's that's fine and we often in, enjoy the chance to sort of share what we're doing um, um, 
but I, 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 in a sense, I find it hard to sort of say, oh, you need do X and Y, and you'll and you'll be able to get into this kind of work. It's really, um, obviously, the, the usual approach is that you establish some sort of reputation, or and then you'll get when when a regular player on a show takes a night off, they'll get a substitute or as a, a, what they call a dep here, a deputy, to come and, and play the show. And effectively, that first opportunity will be the moment where you, you either, you know, you either it's sink or, or swim. Um, if it, if it goes really well and, and you, you do a great job, then that, that's your in and that bodes well for the future. And, but, um, alternatively, that could be, a very quick end <laughs> to your sort of theatre career if it if um, if it doesn't work out. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think I think ultimately just being passionate about what you do, whether it, in whatever you know, I mean, I think it's it's true in any field, whether you you know whether it's in academia or whether it's music or the arts, or whether it's being totally devoted to your your craft and passionate that a that keeps you sort of inspired to keep growing and keep trying to improve and um and i think i think it ultimately everyone wants you know i mean people enjoy working i mean i love working with other musicians who who are being, who are trying, you know, being creative in what they're doing and trying to um, constantly hone what they're playing. I mean, in, in, and obviously in, in theatre, it's often a very repetitive thing. So you need to have a be prepared to sort of have some attention to detail and try and find ways to constantly um, feel fresh, even even if you perform the same. You know, on a two-show day, you've, or you know, at the end of an eight-show week, you've you perform the same music lots of times. But you need to be able to find that way of focusing and 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 being fresh and being creative and being inspired and and yeah, whatever that takes to sort of to maintain that. You know, um, for me, making other music outside of say the theatre is really important to sort of be composing and and working on my own projects to feel as though I've got a sort of a diverse outlet for different kinds of music that's important to me um, so how do you find the balance between all these gigs I guess yeah you have like so many different projects simultaneously yeah that can be hard yeah yeah that can be hard um I don't know. It's I don't know how to balance it really. I mean, you just try your best. Um, I mean, I tend to find the yeah the initial production, you know, pre-production and rehearsals of a new show is very all-consuming, and you have no time really for anything else. Um, in theory, once once the, the schedule settles down, then you there are less rehearsals and there's more time to. to for other projects, um, as a you know freelancer, and um, and I sort of feel like that right now. Like we're just coming up to press night, which is always a very exciting point in the show, um, and and then it's sort of and then we're we're into the the groove of of, uh, of the show, and it's a chance to to sort of catch your breath a little bit, and um, and for me, it's a, yeah, a chance to start some new projects and new composing things um, but it's all it's it's always a challenge because you know to um, to juggle it all but you know I, I, I don't know I, I haven't got any uh, wisdom on that <laughs> and what do you remember about your first day of job like on West End what was it like yeah I mean I think because it, uh, effectively the first the first experience of it for any Western musician in the West End is always as a dep, and that's probably one of the most terrifying musical experiences you can 
have, in a sense, because you're coming into a to an environment where everyone else knows exactly what they're doing, and you have to sound exactly like the person you're covering for, in theory, um, and you're expected to play it perfectly with no mistakes, and and so in, inevitably there's a crazy amount of nervous energy. Um, um, and I know in music colleges and things like that, they now teach students about controlling their nerves and stage fright, you know, but I never, um, uh, they certainly didn't do that when I was at college. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think I, you know, I was, like I was saying to, to Mark Wraith, the other guitar player on, on Come From Away, um, I don't envy the, the, guitar players, well, yeah, the musicians that come in to cover for us, because it's a, there's so much there's so much involved in the in the uh, part, both musically and in terms of staging, um, that it's uh, that's a stressful journey to get from from having to prepare and to learn it, and um, but um, I think to some extent it doesn't. That nervousness doesn't go away. I think you just become more relaxed about observing the. You kind of you you still experience that nervous energy, but you just kind of leave it at the side and say, "Okay, I'm okay with that." Um, and often, when I have nervous, you know, like con, you know, say like a concert, live TV concert, or something or, that I think is really stressful. I just try and think back on a previous occasion where I was terrified and it all went really well. And I think, this is okay, you know, I can be terrified. It, that doesn't matter, it's fine. Just you know, keep, keep going and, and that's, that's it really. Um, yeah, so uh, it's... Uh, I think often in other types of music, making there are rehearsals where you're with other musicians yeah, as opposed to depping there if you were doing a one-off concert then they, all the musicians will come together all rehearse together and then do a concert together whereas a dep everyone else is up and running and you you have to prepare on your own come in and just and just fit in so in a way you feel much more uh, pressure in that sense than if you uh, are part of a band doing a gig or rehearsing for a concert or something like that. Is there anything you would like to talk about? Hmm. I was thinking recently about uh, essentially the the community aspects of music making, um, both in terms. I mean, there's the there's how the music you make. Uh, is part of you know how you relate to the audience, but also as a music maker, how much of what you do is reliant on the community of musicians, and and how much essentially your success and your career is dependent on um, that that community in terms of having building relationships with other musicians, building strong kind of bonds. Um, and I think, see, that's not something you necessarily, you can learn, you know, in college. Um, and I mean, I know of countless examples where musicians, um, are hired as much over another person, as much about their energy as a person and about their personality and their maybe you know an extreme example would be a, a more upbeat positive musician versus a, a more pessimistic negative one who both sound the same who would you rather work with you, you know you'd rather work with the um the happier musician <laughs> um and you know it's a, it's a very uh, crude example but i i was thinking just about how important it is you know at, for me, as I've, you know, been particularly in the theatre, I've realised 
you know, year on year, you you start to feel part of a community of musicians, and you frequently go from one show to another, and you are encountering the same people that you've played with before, and the people who are recommending you for jobs you've worked with before, and and it becomes uh, that becomes a very important part of it, and people and having certainly in productions, it's important. For example, for the musical director to be able to feel like they feel relaxed working with a musician, um, and if it's someone they worked with before, someone that they have a positive relationship with, that makes a big difference in terms of making them feel relaxed. Because maybe in some high pressure situations, just an unknown entity, a person that you don't, they haven't had the experience of knowing whether they can trust them or not. Um, professionally, it makes it it makes their job a lot easier. Um, and so, if I was to translate that into any advice for someone thinking of going into, you know, music making, it's sort of to tie up with that idea of of um, oh, that's a, yeah, five o'clock. Um, is uh, it's yeah. It's the, not only the focus on making every musical um, situation playing your very best, but also being conscious of of the impact of your attitude. Ultimately, I mean, it's a, it's a simple idea, but um, I think it can go a long way in in terms of um, someone's success or failure. And 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 also an attitude, a kind of, um, for one of a better way of describing it, a sort of a growth mindset. You know, it's important in in this environment. But I think as a musician, or you know, I mean, in any any field, to be self-critical and have a have the ability to sort of establish where what your shortcomings are and work on them. You know. In, and and that will you know that stands you in good um, steed in terms of uh, really making the most of every situation and um, and uh, and improving as you go along. Um, so so for, yeah, for me, every situation is an opportunity to grow, um, which yeah, which is exciting. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Pleasure.